Good morning, welcome to Christ the King's morning prayer service. This is Monday, November 8th. The opening sentence is from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said unto me, we will go into the house of the Lord. The confession of sin, found on page 12. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins. True repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Jubilate. We say together. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates of thanksgiving and into his courts of praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. We'll now have the Psalm reading and the New Testament reading. The Psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 22, found on page 292. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so far from my cry and from the words of my complaint. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. In the night season also, but I find no rest. But you remain holy. Enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our fathers hoped in you. They trusted in you, and you delivered them. They called upon you and were delivered. They put their trust in you and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man. Scorned by all and the outcast of the people. All those who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and shake their heads saying, He trusted in God that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, if he will have him. But you are he that took me out of my mother's womb. You were my hope when I was yet upon my mother's breasts. I have been cast upon you ever since I was born. You are my God, even from my mother's womb. Well, go not far from me, for trouble is near at hand. There is none to help me. Many oxen have come around to me. Fat bulls of Bashan close me in on every side. They gape at me with their mouths. Like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart also in the midst of my body is like melting wax. My strength is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue cleaves to my gums. And you bring me into the dust of death. For many dogs have come about me. And the counsel of the wicked lay siege against me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. 
They stand staring and looking upon me. They part my garments among them. And cast lots for my clothing. But be not far from me, O Lord. You are my succor. Hasten to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword. My life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. And my soul in misery from among the horns of wild oxen. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Oh, praise the Lord, you that fear him. Magnify him, all you seed of Jacob, and fear him, all you seed of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the low estate of the poor. He has not hidden his face from him, but when he called unto him, he heard him. My praise is of you in the great congregation. My vows will I perform in the sight of those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek after the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and be turned unto the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's. And he is the governor among the peoples. All those who sleep in the earth, how shall they worship him? All those who go down into the dust, how shall they kneel before him? But my life shall be preserved in his sight, and my children shall worship him. They shall tell of the Lord to the generations to come. And to a people yet unborn shall they declare his righteousness. That he has brought it to pass. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This morning's reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. James is killed and Peter in prison. About that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. Now, when Herod was about to bring him out on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up saying, get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went out and went along one street, and immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. When he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. 
And when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. Recognizing Peter's voice, in her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran in and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. They said to her, you're out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so. And they kept saying, it's an angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they opened, they saw him and were amazed. But motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, tell these things to James and to the brothers. And then he departed and went to another place. Now when the day came, there was no little disturbance among the soldiers over what had come of what had become of Peter. And after Herod searched for him and did not find him, he examined the sentries and ordered that they should be put to death. Then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and spent time there. The death of Herod. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. And they came to him with one accord, and having persuaded Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for peace, because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. And the people were shouting, the voice of a god and not that of a man. Immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory, and he was eaten by worms, and he breathed his last. But the word of God increased and multiplied. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle this morning is the Te Deum Laudamus, We Praise You, O God, found on page 17. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, you, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we have put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. The Apostles' Creed on page 20. I believe in God, the Father, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. A collect for the renewal of life for Monday on page 22. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace. That having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the time for prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning for this season of fall that is fast uh, encroaching on us. Help us to remember with thankfulness all that you have given us. I pray especially for Melody Ripley's children and family that they may be comforted, that they may draw near to you be closer to you and have you guide them through each and every day for the coming weeks and for the time of their grieving. Lord, I lift up the people of Christ the King. I lift them up because they are yours. They are your servant. We wish to, to do your will every day, every minute. Help us to listen for your voice, whether it's a still small voice, whether it's spoken through others, whether it's quite a large smack on the head. Lord, help us to be willing to do all you ask of us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you thanks for our parish family, Christ the King, and ask, Lord, your spirit to empower us and uh, to energize us to do the things that you've called us to do. We pray, Lord, for our friends at Bell Haven Elementary, and we pray for the principal, the teachers, staff, uh, the kids at that school. We ask, Lord, for your blessing to be upon them. And we pray for our parish family that the needs that have been identified by the school will be met by our parishioners. And we pray, Lord, for uh, the other uh, ministries, the outreach um, that uh, we're connected with, especially uh, LifeQuest. We pray for the executive uh, director and uh, his staff, John Jones, and we ask, Lord, you bless him. And we pray for, uh, for a, a good meeting today with him and uh, their future plans and the current plans uh, for uh, reaching kids in, in New Mexico detention centers. And we pray, Lord, that uh, you will keep us uh, healthy uh, during this uh, season of flu and COVID and, and other ailments that are out there, other uh, viruses. We pray, Lord, for health and protection in Jesus' name. Amen.
a prayer of St. John Chrysostom is found on page 26. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.